Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering a problem from the Perl Weekly Challenge number 88. The reason that we are covering this is because in the most recent ArrayCast episode that if I release this YouTube video on the right day was also released today, I believe November 27th, we start the episode off by talking about this problem. Specifically, I uh, pose this problem question to the three panelists and get them to solve it live. And I figured it would be useful to uh, release a supplementary video that walks through a couple of their solutions plus my solutions because uh, audio podcasts aren't always the best way to understand code solutions. So I figured this would be a good resource. So what is the problem that we're going to be solving? It's called array of product and it states you're given an array of positive integers uh, n write a script to return an array m where m i is the product of all elements of n except for the index at n i. So for example, if you have the array 52143, which is five elements long, you should get a list of five elements back where each of the elements is equal to the product of all of the elements in the original list, except for the element at that index. So for our first number in our output m, it's 24. That is equal to our list with the first element number five, uh, removed. So we get 2 times 1 times 4 times 3 is equal to 24. Our second uh, element in our resulting array m is going to be 60. That's with uh, 5 times 1 times 4 times 3 with the 2 removed, which is going to be equal to 60. And you just keep doing that. So hopefully that makes sense. If you're not, maybe walk through this example once or twice. There's also a second example. Uh, but once you understand what the problem's asking for, uh, unpause this video and come back and we're going to hop into our ride editor and solve that problem live. So we're going to look at a number of different solutions. The first one is going to be uh, my first uh, attempt to solve this, which is basically using uh, compress, which is this uh, algorithm, the slash, um, plus uh, Boolean masks. And I'll explain that in a bit. Um, the next solution after that is going to be sort of Adam's solution uh, from the podcast, which is basically just a, t a spin on... Um, my solution, except it's using, uh, I believe he said he uses set difference. We're going to use without, which is similar because I actually don't know how to do set difference. Um, and we're going to do that plus uh, indexing, which is going to be basically just using the indices. So it's, it's without plus uh, uh, indexing plus the indices. Um, then we're going to look at uh, my second attempt, which was basically using uh, rotates. Um, plus uh, one drop, and uh, that's basically it. So I'll explain that later. Uh, then we're going to take a look at Steven's solution, which is basically the nicest. Um, so we'll call this very nice. And uh, then we're going to basically just look at the uh, tacit form of Steven's solution. So to start, let's start with our 52143. That's our example array. Uh, from the question. And let's take a look at our, our, our first idea to solve this. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to make use of this compress algorithm, which if given a sequence of uh, ones and zeros on the left and an array on the right, it's going to filter out any of the elements that correspond to a zero. So it's only going to keep the one and the three because the two corresponds to a zero in the Boolean mask. So all we need to do is basically build up five different Boolean masks, each with a, a single zero in it corresponding to a different index. And then once we do that, we can sort of create a, a list of lists and then do a multiplies reduction to get our result. So the way we are going to build up our, um, uh, our Boolean mask is first by getting the length, AKA the tally. And then we are going to do iota tally, which gives us one, two, three, four, five. Um, so it's an iota sequence equal to the number of elements in our list. And then we can do, we basically gonna create an identity matrix, which is gonna be uh, created by doing an outer, pro outer product equals. Um, and if we want, sort of this is the verbose way to do this, we want the left and the right arguments to our outer product equal to be the same thing. And so basically it's just gonna check where are all the equal, where are all the elements equal to each other, which is just gonna be along the diagonal. However, um, we don't need to do this redundantly. We can just add the C combinator, AKA flip and Haskell, AKA commute in APL. And this will give us the exact same result. And then once we do that, we can basically just knot that and it'll change all the zeros to ones and ones to zeros. 
And now we have basically all of our masks. We're going to uh, mix this in order to turn it into a list of lists. But basically here, we've got uh, five masks, each of them with a zero in it corresponding to a different index. So now we can use these masks in order to uh, drop basically a single element, and then we can do our reduction. So from here, uh, what should we do? Let's turn this, I guess, into a defun, and we can put this. So this will just be the same thing. It's just sort of in a lambda, aka what they call a defund in APL. And let's try to do our filter this way, um, which I believe we need to add this sort of TAC uh, rank or TAC compose in order to get this to be unambiguous when it's parsed, which is pretty irritating. And we're going to want to do this um, for each of these masks. And we're going to want to flip the order because we want the Boolean mask to be on the left. And then we just need to enclose our original um, which is actually going to be, have to be parenthesized. And then boom, there we go. So now we have basically five sublists, each of the elements dropped from one of the sublists. And then if we do a multiplies reduction over each of these, we're gonna get our answer. I could go ahead and turn this into a tacit solution. Yeah, sure, why not, let's do it. Um, so we can delete this, uh, turn this into, a, and then actually let's just put this in defund form because this would be pretty messy. So this right time of our fork is going to be a defund because we basically just have a bunch of monadic functions, monadic, monadic, uh, monadic with you when you combine the commute, monadic and monadic, and that's going to be a pain to turn into tacit. So this should work actually, I think, um, which it does. So this is our first solution, pretty verbose, not really that pretty. Let's take a look at Adam's alternate sort of version. So instead of building up Boolean masks, um, he's going to build up just a sequence of indices. So if you have basically one, two, three, and then you want to select out only, you know, the actually that's a bad example. Let's turn this to 10, 20, 30, and you want the last two elements, you can just select the last two indices, aka two and three, because um, we have one indexing currently turned on. And so then if we just were to create a matrix of indices instead of our Boolean masks, we could then do this. So note that actually we can take, um, how do we want to do this? We can take this and actually just do an iota underbar, AKA where, uh, I guess that's not going to work, um, where this basically turns each of our ones into an index and just throws away the zeros. However, there's an alternative way to do this, and that is with a verb called without. So given a sequence of numbers, five, two, one, four, three, or elements just in general, and another sequence of elements on the right, like two and three, it's just going to remove those values from the array on the left. Uh, so five, two, one, four, three without two and three just gives you five, one, four. And so how can we use this to build up our indices? We're going to do something very similar. So we're going to take five, two, one, four, three. We're going to start with a tally. Then we're going to do iota. And then we're going to build up a fork where we enclose. And we can first just do catenate. And then we're going to do identity. And this is going to give us one, two, three, four, five. And then the individual elements, one, two, three, four, and five. So if we do without for each of this, this should give us the indices that we want. And so what we can do then is if we turn this into a defun, aka put braces and omega at the end, then we can put these inside of brackets and then we can just index into this, uh, which doesn't work because we need to turn this into matrix, which involves us doing this. Um, and then once we have that, we can just do our multiplies reductions and we're good to go. So. This is a sort of atom solution, except using without instead of set difference. Although that's maybe what he meant but when he said set difference. Um, and this is nicer than the solution that I had originally um, presented in terms of the Boolean mask. Although I'm not a huge fan of these using the brackets in order to index. But let's move on to the third solution, which is going to be basically rotating and dropping. So uh, a, a one rotate on an array five, two, uh, one, four, three, basically is just going to take the first element and move it to the end. So you can see the fives at the end here. And if we do a two rotate, it's going to take the first two elements and move them to the end, which is why you see the five, two here. So basically what we can do is we can build up 
uh, multiple rotations so that we get a different element at the beginning, drop that first element and then do the reduction. So let's see if we can do that. So once again, we're gonna want to do tally, iota tally to get the one, two, three, four, five. Once we have this, we can compose this, turn it into a fork for the moment, we'll catenate. And then once again, we can show what this looks like, except um, we actually don't want, um, I think this is actually what we do want. So then if we uh, do this, uh, except we need to, you know, we do need to enclose this. Yeah, so now we have five different rotations and we now want to do a one drop for each of these. And if we do that, we can then do a multiplies reduction for each of these. And uh, you can see that the 24 is actually at the end. So a quick fix to this, we can just make this negative, which is gonna drop the last element instead of the first element, and then we're good to go. And we can turn this tacit very quickly, I believe, if we just do this, do this. I think that that's then, oh no, that didn't work. Um, oh, right, because actually that, that did work. We just can get rid of this now. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cute. I, uh, I like this solution quite a bit because it's a little bit more involved, but it actually turns out to be not that much longer than a couple of the other solutions. However, all of the solutions that we've seen up until now are suboptimal, which brings us to Steven's solution. And Steven made the observation that if you just multiply and get your product, and then if we turn this into a defund, because that's what he originally presented, if you take this and then divide it just by your initial sequence, because we have sort of uh, division by arrays and scalars, you're backing out the one element that you didn't want to include. Um, and this totally works. Um, and note that the conditions on the problem state that you have positive numbers, so you don't need to worry about dividing by zero. And this is the solution that Stephen presented, which is absolutely beautiful. But this can be turned into a fork because we have the pattern where we have uh, two unary functions. Here we have our most beautiful, most optimal solution in the form of a fork, one reduction, and one division, it's gonna be linear in time, it's gonna be the fastest, the most beautiful. And if we turn this into sort of a final solution, um, we can even remove the parentheses, which then makes this a four character solution. Absolutely beautiful. And this is kind of the point of the video. It's supposed to be supplementary for the ArrayCast episode that dropped today, or you know, in the past if you're watching this in the future. But it's also to highlight the value that you get from APL, not just from learning the symbols, not just from learning the rank polymorphism, etc., but from learning the combinators, uh, trying to build up solutions that make or take advantage of these combinators forces you to think in a different direction. Now, some of you might have already sort of thought of this in whichever language you program in, but I myself didn't come to this solution until trying to think, oh, is there a better solution than the rotator, the, the filtering, aka compressing um, and it wasn't until I started trying to use a fork that I found my way to this solution. So APL is awesome. Links in the description for the ArrayCast episode and for other links if you want to check APL out. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something and have a great day.